Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the July meeting of the Mountain View Computer Users Group. I'm John Buter, the president, which I'm sure that everyone here already knows. This month's meeting is on digital computer, digital photograph editing. We're going to be using photos on the Mac and iOS. However, what I will be showing you is applicable to all photo editing programs. Some will have a lot more capabilities that I'm showing you. Some will have a little bit less, but most of them will be able to do the same thing. And what we're gonna be doing, if you didn't get it right in the camera, we're gonna fix it afterwards. And that's exactly what editing is about. You get it right in the camera, you don't have to do it. You don't have to waste your time. If you don't, there's ways to fix it. We got some great timely tech topics. One in particular is just was mind blowing. And then let's move right along. Okay, we have sponsors, ten dollars meeting, hundred dollars a year. You get a slide up, post a video on the web, Facebook mention, ask around who knows. Our continuing sponsor, the candle lady, Carolyn McLean. Um, this month we've got blueberry tea. Oh, do you have any citronella candles? There's your phone number if you're looking for really great candles. These are the ones. That the ten percent off is website only. Oh, so I have to go through the website to get it. Then I won't order through you. I'll order through your website. But that site that's right there on them. Uh user group business, the officers do this quickly. There's me, the president, Carolyn, our treasurer who has a treasurer's report, I hope. We have our Black Friday at eighty four dollars and ninety six cents in checking is Black Friday twenty five dollars to twenty two cents and see total um Okay, that should keep us going until October. Seventy-five dollars a month just for insurance and the growth. Yes, I know that that insurance, because uh, it's the insurance is not to cover us. The insurance is to cover somebody not in the group who might get injured while we are in this room. You follow that? So instead of the college being liable, we would be liable. Now, if you get injured here. The college is liable. It makes absolutely no sense. Okay, uh, Mike McLean is our, one of our vice presidents. He handles uh, iOS and Windows. Um, we have Barry, our second vice president, who handles Mac OS and iOS. Oh, good, because this one doesn't even look like you anymore. And then we have our mystery officer, Jim Emmons. I spoke with Jim this past week. He does, in fact, exist. Or it's an excellent recorded message, um, which it would it, it could be. Well, what really bothers me, I don't know if any of you have gotten the spam calls in which they have a recording that is simulating a real person. And so you think you're talking to a real person because they have it triggered on your response. And so you realize about halfway through the phone call that this, there's no real person there. They're not listening to me. But then it could, it could be a wipe. So it's really hard to say. But generally speaking, I found out the ones on the phone are, in fact, uh, we have our website, which has all kinds of information on it. Jim keep, does a good job of keeping it up. We have our Facebook page, membership benefits. We have hardware checkout, a professional consultation. Barry and I both do it. I got a panic call this past week. One of our members in Bisbee got a message up on the screen saying, your computer has been infected. This is Microsoft, and I forget the, the um, protect, Microsoft protector. Microsoft Defender has detected highly infected. Call this number. Fortunately, they called me up, and it was one of our other, it was uh, Marine out of Bisbee. Marine calls me up, and she says, what do you think? And I said, no, Microsoft doesn't work that way. Not at all. And she says, well, I you know, went to the website. It looked legit, and they were in the process of copying all the files. And so I said, unplug it. They were worried that they, if they went back in, they would be able to restart. I said, no, it doesn't work that way. You have got to give them permission. Now, once you give them permission, it's wide open. We got one last week from PayPal, and it looked pretty good, except they kind of minced up the PayPal uh, sloping uh, logo. And it was, we have approved this payment of $800 to somebody. Uh, if there's an issue with this, that cost. But I get about once a week, and they wanted, and they were getting ready to pay $350 to fix the computer. I said, no, Microsoft doesn't work that way. If you ever get something that says your computer is infected, call this number, go to this website. That is not legit. Now, if you want Microsoft support, you must go up to their website. They we make a request, and then they will contact you directly, probably through email. Yeah, they, they have a whole new support system up there. I don't know if you've seen it yet. Actually, quite good. You can go in and request, and then they make it very um, robust in security features. Okay, any questions? Okay, moving right along. Membership, $25 per household annually. Membership year is September through August. That means renewals coming up. 
pay annual dues to Treasurer Carol McLean. Mail a check. Okay, we don't need to go through this. Everybody's up to date. I changed this. I changed this. Okay, part two is next month. Yep, I forgot to take the other one out. Okay, I'll fix that. Next month, do not miss that meeting. We're going to be looking at how AI has changed in one year year and in one year it has exploded chat gpt has become a commonplace use there are numerous ai applications to do just about anything you want some of them really really good some of them not worth it at all you were with watching a cup pure snow where everybody's just one of the big things we're going to be looking at is generative fill in photoshop we will be given a complete yeah, i'll give you a complete demo on that because it's going to blow your mind it has solved so much of issues for photographers like let's say i take go out and take your portrait or i have take let's say I've, I've taken a picture a scenic there's people in it that i don't want well before i could go out and remove them now all i do is circle them and say fix it and it goes in and does an incredible job of fixing removing those people. Let's say that I've done a bit of architectural and I need a, another two feet of space on this wall over here to make it balance right before I'd have to go in and build it by hand. Hours worth of work. I just go now, draw a selection and say, fix it. And it goes in and does an incredible job drawing in that wall or that fence or that garden or a chimney. I can go and say, hey, I want to have a chimney there. You just go in and say, give me a chimney. And it'll come up and give me three types of chimneys. Give me a fireplace on a wall. And the results are stunning. I have never been so impressed with a capability ever. Not since the first back. I mean, it is mind-blowing. So we're going to have a complete, and I'm going to go through and talk about, like, Chat GPT. Give you a um a demo of that. Chat GPT is your personal assistant. I use it now instead of searching. Go up and say, you know, if I have a specific question, like one of the questions I ask it, uh, explain to me the difference between, this is an actual one that I did, explain to me the difference between string theory and M theory as to a science professional who is not a physicist. And it gave me a four-page article that was excellent on the differences between the two. Because I've always had a problem with the differences between, you know, string and M, M theory. Now I understand it. It makes perfect logical sense. So anytime I have a question rather than do a Google search would just go and find a place to talk about it. This actually explains it to you. So if you're not using ChatGPT, after next month, you just might. So that's going to be a really exciting. And then we're going to look at a few things like <clears throat> AI video, which is a waste of time and effort. It's not even close yet. It's a joke. We'll be right back. Okay, first topic, Apple, this past week, became the first $3 trillion company. Their stock, for no known reason that anybody could figure out, skyrocketed. It went up almost $10 a share in one week. Now, it's settled down. There's still over $3 trillion, but it's, it didn't hit the $200 a share mark. Speculation as to why, I've heard so many different reasons why they sound good and they all sound bad at the same time. Part of it has to be that the Vision Pro is actually being received a lot better than analysts anticipated. Apple's move into India has gone much better than anticipated. They are diversifying out of China, which the analysts like. They've now moved the target of Apple stock from 225 to 250. Speculation, I bet 300 by Christmas. If they hit 300 by Christmas, they could be the first $4 trillion company in existence. It's just mind-boggling. Reviews of the Apple OS releases. Normally when a new OS is released, the reviews on it are rather, uh, we don't like this, we don't like that. Why do they make that change? It's okay. This time around, the developer beta went public, which means anyone can get the developer beta for this OS. Developer betas are buggy, very buggy. But so far, people are giving glowing reports. The iOS 17 there's only been one review that I found. It was not a bad review, but she had a developer beta, and because of what she had on her phone, she had to end up redoing her phone. She had a major crash. That happens with developer betas, but she's the only one. And she even knew why, because she had a piece of software on there that was so old, it tried to do something, the system wouldn't let it, and locked it. Mac OS, what they gave at the developers conference, and what is coming out don't match too well. There's a lot more coming out Mac OS. Lots of hidden features. One of the great ones is the, Mac, is the iOS TV OS screensaver, which everybody loves. Because you got drone shots of all over the world. You have shots from the 
International Space Station. I mean, you just sit and watch it like a show that's coming to Mac OS. Big feature coming out is in tvOS on the Apple TV will now support FaceTime using the iPhone continuity camera. This is huge. This is the first TV streaming system that supports interaction. You'll be able to make a FaceTime call to anyone. By the way, if you didn't know that, if you want to FaceTime with someone who does not have a, a Apple product, you can easily do it. All you do is put their phone number in. It will send them a link. They go to on that web page and they're on. And it works beautifully. We may try and demonstrate that at a future meeting. Maybe try and do that next month. It works really well. I have not tried the new tvOS continuity camera. It is supposed to have some features that allow it to follow the talker. Looking forward to that one. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how it works. Oh, on this, yes. But we're talking about for a wider... This is huge. The FAA, for the first time, has approved a flying car design for experimental production. What that means is, is that for the first time, they're allowing a flying car design to be placed on the streets of major cities. Never before have they had a design. One of the big things about it, first off, it has a range of 300 miles driving 150 miles flying. That's not bad. That gives you a range of 450 miles. That's a good range. You know, it was, I checked. I went up to the site and, and did that. It is cumulative. It is an all-electric car. The flying machine and the car use two different batteries. They're using, apparently, a new type of battery, solid-state battery. Toyota announced that they were going to be using that same type of battery technology. And that, oh, significantly lighter. Um, So, cities so far that have been identified as potential sites are San Diego, Phoenix, Albuquerque, which really surprised me. And there was a fourth one. I, I don't remember who it was. There are lots of questions about this, like licenses. Here's a tricky one. The FAA says because of the maximum height, it will be flying. You do not need a pilot's license. So a news article has said that the FAA, that they, oh, they did. Well, they changed that then. Because originally they said you would not need it. So you will have to have a pilot. It's going to be a special pilot's license, though. Because it's not really a plane. I hadn't seen that one. Okay. Now, the price, it will be available in 2025 is the current projection, which is not that far off. The price is 300000 Before you think, oh my God, that is ridiculous for a car. Yes, it is. But not for a plane. It's very reasonable for a plane, especially a four-passenger plane. How it's doing what it's doing, we can, I, I haven't been able to find anything that, that explains how it works. My thoughts are it's using a type of drone technology. However, there's a problem with that because drone technology is the lift is so light, it would never support a car. And the size of it is small enough that I don't know. They showed four in the uh, prototype. So it's a two-passenger. This are... Okay, that's a lot different than the original article. So, there we go. That's a time of tech. Share a tip. The first one is how link notes and documents. So, you can link notes and documents. What we're going to do is, is break out of here, go into notes. Now, right now, if I want to have... Okay, so I'm going to create a note. If I wanted to reference this note and this note, there's no current way of doing it easily. However, what I can do is come up here to share, send a copy to myself. You have to send it as a collaboration. Okay, now I take and copy. I come back here into this note, and now I've got that link. And when I click on it, it takes me to the note that I want reference. TVOS, I want to tell you about an app. This is available on all platforms. Roka, um, Google, it's called Just Watch TV. It is an app that keeps track of your streaming services, you tell what streaming service you subscribe to. And then when you want to watch something, it goes and searches those streaming services for what you want to watch. And then allows you to go directly to it. On Apple TV, the search capability does not include YouTube, does not include Netflix. So if you want to look at for something and those two streaming services, you can't. You have to go into the app to do it. Just watch TV, YouTube, Netflix. But it makes, I use it almost every time I watch TV. For something new. And in theory, it keeps track. You too? What? Do it is real to it. I want to watch TV uh, quite some time back, but I think real to it. Uh, because it's got Disney Plus, Apple TV Plus. Uh, it's got to buy the buy buy the free services, buy subscription services. Is it available for Apple TV? Oh, okay. Then why didn't you tell us about it before? You're too back, I think. R E E L T. But I've been using Just Watch TV, and but I'll try out real good and see.
I'm always looking for a better way. I haven't looked at this yet, but Lucinda just told me that yesterday she discovered they added this kind of capability to IMDB now. IMDB. Really? That they just introduced a new feature where you can tell it what streaming services you have. If you have, you know, when you search for something, it'll tell you if it's on any of your own things that you subscribe to. If you don't, if you like TV and movies and you don't have IMDb, you've got to. IMDb is a database of TV shows, movies, actors, actresses, directors. Like you've been seeing and watching a movie and say, who is that person in this movie? I, I recognize them, but I don't know who they are. You go up to IMDb and they've got pictures of all the cast. You click on their face picture. It takes you to their profile and you can find out who they are. Or geez, where do I recognize them from? Now, moving right along. The next one, the next three are Mac OS only. There may be equivalents in Windows. I was not able to find this out. These are some things which can really help you when you need them. First, let's go in and take a look at a feature in the Finder. There it is. It's over to the Apple. Recent items keeps track of applications, documents, and servers. So if like in many applications, you'll have recent items. This is a global recent item. That's cool. However, if you hold down the command key, if you hold down the command key, you go to recent items, you can you get a show, and that will show you the document. Show you in the finder, the application in the finder. It'll show you where they are in the folder. This opens them. This shows them where they're at. See, I told you, Barry. Didn't know that one, did you? Okay, that's number one. That's really cool. Second one, and this is one that I did not know about, and I discovered by accident. You have here in the control panel, and let's say that, geez, I really wish I had the stage manager as a button in my menu bar. Wouldn't that be cool? Click and drag it, and there it is. Stage manager is now in the menu bar. Let's say that I want focus on my menu bar. I now have focus on my menu bar, and to get rid of it, you just drag it out. So anything that's in the control panel, you can put in the menu bar just by clicking and dragging. Did you know that one? It's in the control panel, you can. Drag into your menu bar for faster access. Something in the finder, which I was unaware of, but once I saw it, it was so incredibly obvious. So let's go into the finder. I'm in the finder and I'm up here and we all know about using search. And we type in, let's say, um, and you know, name contains, it brings it up here. Well, you see up here where it says name, if you click and drag on that, you get file name or everything. What if I want to do, I want to find a JPEG. Well, I can type in the keyword kind, colon, and I get kind. Now these come from, if you do over here and do a extension, you get all these tags here. All of them you can use with the colon in the command line. If that's not enough, you can go to other, and here's all those that are available for searching on. I'm not going to go through all of them. Pardon? No, they're all types. No, they're all types of documents. You can are types of information you can search on. Yeah, search, uh, search. Thank you. Search after these old search attributes you can use in the search command by entering like you know city, color space, composer, date last used. I can get this one, and that way I I can search more on what I am looking for when I need to. Most of the time we just default the name because that's what it defaults to. But there are lots more options available to you. I did not know that. Those are my tips. Okay. We have anything for iOS or Windows? Well, just that Windows is getting awfully hard to keep track of. That's uh, one of the podcasts I follow. I'm gathering that the way Microsoft is now avoiding any criticism of what they do with Windows is to confiscate it as much as must. Something I found that apparently happened while I was on petition is that now for updates, whereas I can tell we don't really have patch Tuesdays anymore, we have updates that come up pretty much at random times to random people. We now have updates that are called moments. We're up to moment three already. Moments are patches that also include new features, but they're not really announcing these. First, new features are being given out to some people of some of the development show. I know they're ready to release. They're being released without announcement to random people in general. Uh, and there's there's no telling when you might get any kind of update. Unless you're actually going to Windows update and see how I update. Otherwise, nope, there's not going to be any announcements of what the new features are. I think if you follow uh, the uh, CEO's blog, I think he mentioned some of this. But otherwise, it's like even the podcasts I follow with the Windows people are going, I got to find them a job. Because they're making this impossible hell uh, to do any media packages. And even the updates that come out, uh, the new things are pretty much like, it's kind of, instead of spur windows, no way of what I'm going to think of that kind of thing. In, in the first thing. Uh, I did hear of something that's coming out. It just hit the deaf channels. It's called Copilot. It is their latest uh, Microsoft thing where we're going to take a little AI and spread. All it is is a basically updated for time. It, it uses the same uh, 
Windows combination key that you get for more time. I'll get it to the dev channels, but from the podcast, I was where the guy was safe for what he could tell. Uh, his the same thing as Cortana. Uh, put, he put uh, the OS in the dark, that kind of thing. So a voice assistant. I'm kidding. But you just reminded me about something. I forgot to put this under tips and tricks. For those of you who use HomeKit, control your house. There was an announcement made last year about a new technology protocol called Matter. That was supposed to revolutionize, allow Google, Alexa, and HomeKit to work together if it's Matter enabled. Well, I just got my first Matter enabled light bulb. It's everything they promised. It was amazing. Unlike normally when you have when you go and put in a new light bulb or a new device that it doesn't show up until you enter the code if you can't do the scan with matter the second you open the app there it is and all you have to just is type in the code which is a requirement or scan it no delay when i turn the light on it comes on the, i have a new a new motion sensor that has matter unlike the old motion centers there was a delay from the time that it sensed you to the time it did something now it's down to less than a second. It's almost instantaneous. More and more stuff is coming out matter enabled. Many of the devices you can upgrade to matter. M-A-T-T. That's what it's called. Matter. M-A-T-T-E-R. That's the name of the protocol. So matter does matter. iOS. We have Twitter. Now we have threads. The Twitter ultra. You have that. Yes. And it is hilarious because Elon Musk immediately said, I am going to sue you for take the, taking Twitter free secrets and hiring Twitter engineers. And Mustard or Zuckerberg responded with, we don't have any Twitter engineers. So that's about saying sue the sensor. Well, this is out there. Yeah, I saw that. Have you played with it yet? Uh, uh, looks pretty much like Twitter. But it's amazing how many people um, go out to it. If you have an Instagram account, you can easily automatically go to it. Yeah. Any questions so far? Okay. Oh, yes, ma'am. That's this, um, That's really cool. It's called the National Park. We can look up national parks and everything you see in that park. And one of the things that I found out, of course, I found out too late because some of the national parks can have full of self servers. You can actually download the star while it, before it gets to the top of course, and then you can actually use it while you're. Um, which reminds me, there is a feature that we haven't talked much about in iPhone Map, and it's called Guides. You have to hunt for it, and it will do it more coming up. But go into Maps, look for guides. They're guides for a city for restaurants, for recreational purposes. We're going to be taking a break shortly, by the way. Something I did not know, you can create your own guides. So if you go and do a search for a restaurant that you want to go to, you can add it to the guide you created for that city. Like my wife and I are getting ready to go to Sedona, Flagstaff, and Taos. I've got researched restaurants we want to go to. I go into Maps, find it, put it in my guide. I now have like 20 places in my guide for Sedona. Yes, Yes, I, I created this one for myself. Okay. Any questions? Any other questions? We'll come back in about five minutes. Tech base. Well, my God, this is so insecure. I can't believe you came up with that. Okay, we're back from the break. Let's move on. Now we're going to be talking about digital photography editing. You saw this last week on the Steps to Good Photography. We went through composing, and that's where we ended up shooting. And now we're going to go into fix it. You've taken the picture. You've come back home. You look at it. And it's not what you wanted. That's when we go into fixing. Now, <laughs> fixing includes not just correcting problems that happen during the exposure phase or the composition phase. It can be creativity. And I'm not going to do a whole lot of that today on creativity. I'm going to talk about that next month and show you some amazing creativity. Like, you have a father-in-law who's bald. You want to give him hair. That used to be a time-intensive task. Now... It's not. Or you want to put sunglasses on somebody. That used to be very sophisticated retouching. Now, easy. There's nothing to it. Let's talk about the steps to good editing. These are my step. This is the workflow I use. It is also the workflow that you'll probably find a lot of other people use also. There may be some differences. But the steps are cropping, fixing the light, fixing the color, and doing special effects. In that order. I strongly recommend you follow this workflow because if you do... You'll spend a lot less time editing because if you go through and like try to do the color first before you do light, you're going to have to go back and fix it. And what we're going to do is go through each one of these steps with a bunch of photos and show you what I would do. So moving right along, the first thing we're going to do is in cropping, and I'm going to be demonstrating this, but I want to let you know what I'm going to be doing. The first thing you do is you decide what dimensions you want 
the photograph to be in. These are some popular sizes. 4x6, 5x7, 8x10, 16x9 is used for video, and that's what I use on a lot of my stuff because I end up putting them in videos. I have been asked on numerous occasions, why 8x10? That is such an odd size. And 5x7 is such an odd size. Where does that come from? The answer is rather interesting because in the United States, we use 8x10 as our standard. You go to Europe, it's not. Many, many, many years ago, in the early days of photography, they would place the emulsion on a glass plate. That's what they had to use. Window panes at that time came in two sizes. One was 8x10 and the other one was 5x7. So if you were doing photography, those were your sizes. You might remember 35 by 5 Where does that one come from? What's half of a 5x7? 35 by 5 What's half of an 8x10? 4x5. Remember the 4x5 negatives? That's where it came from. A little bit of trivia. Then in cropping, the next thing you do after you figure out what size you want is do you want it to be a vertical or a horizontal composition? Remember, yes, you can go in and change the orientation after the fact. If you've taken a horizontal picture and you want to make it vertical, you can. Or if you take it vertical and you want to make it horizontal, you can. But in both cases, you will lose quality a lot. And I'll be showing you that when we get to it. The thing is, you want to make sure your horizon level and your lines are straight. And we'll be taking a look at that. Now let's go in and do a demo. What I'm going to do is come down here into photos. I have some pictures up here. We're going to start off with this picture right here. It's not bad. So we're going to go into edit. And I'm going to go into full screen just so it makes it bigger. And I have my tools, adjust, filters, crop. Since I want to crop, more than likely I'm going to be choosing crop tab. And we're going to talk all about these in just a second. Let's go over to crop. And now I've got over here on the side, I got my different aspect ratios. Right now it's five by seven. I can do four by six, 16 by nine. And since this, I'm going to select 16 by nine right now. No, take it on the phone. Yes, it's, it's available. It's available in the editor. I was going to show you on my iPad. However, my iPad, I did not bring the cable for it, but it is there. All these things are available in both editors. Okay, so I'm going to select under crop. You can see it. I'm going to select, let's do a four by three. And then I'm going to come and drag this down. I want to cut out some of this nonsense in here. I could move it over. I want my mountains to cover about two thirds of it. Still got too much. There we go. Okay. As an 8x10, I've lost my panoramic. I'm going to be printed on 8x10, so that's what I'm going to use. I can go freeform. In freeform, I can make it any way that I want. Bring it out over there. Get rid of this foreground. That's actually more of what I wanted, which is almost a 16x9. Now, it took me, once I hit the return key, it took me out of the editor. I want to go back into the editor, back into crop. And then if I want to, I can, my straighten tool allows me to adjust the tilt. I want to make sure like that telephone pole is exactly straight. I can adjust the vertical, which you rarely have to do unless you're trying to correct architectural parallax correction, a horizontal tilt. In this case, I am going to, because I want to de-emphasize that telephone pole, right? I can flip it. Ooh, actually, I like that better. And then when I say, okay, it is now cropped. So now I have that picture done. We're going to go back and here's a picture of Jane and I. I want to crop that one. So we're going to go into edit and come over to crop, and I'm going to leave the aspect ratio 5 by 7 because that's what I'm going to print it as. And I want to bring it in, fix the composition, use the world composition. And you try and have the, this line right here that we saw that horizontal line, have that on the eyes like that. I'm going to say, okay, do I need to, I do need to correct the parallax on the vertical because it looks like that we're tilting backwards. And the lines seem to be straight. Everything else looks good. And I'm going to say, and you do go through, you know, that's the first step you do. There's two ways of doing this. One is you go through all the photos in a session and you do all the cropping, then you do all the lighting, then you do all the color correction, or you do it one photo at a time. It's really up to you. My preferences, I do one picture at a time. Now, in some cases, when I've got doing commercial work, I've taken a whole bunch of pictures on the same conditions. I'll go through and do the cropping. And then I can fix light on one and just apply it to all of them. You can't do it in photos. That's Lightroom. Okay, here's, oh, here's another good one. Our friend Stefan Scott. There's a lot wrong with this one. Is this a video? Because we're going to go through and pick a frame. I'm going to crop the entire thing. I go over to crop. Well, the first thing is I have to straighten it. Now they're okay. And I need to change the vertical. There we go. Now they're staying up straight. It's already, I can go down. 
forced into a 16 by 9 to make sure that it is 16 by 9 and we're good to go. And now it doesn't look like it's... So yes, you can do the same thing in video as with photos. And uh, can you change the size of the whole thing like you would with... You select it 16 by 9, but can you just crop it? And then it'll crop the whole thing. Yes, yeah, you can do it freeform. Oh, yeah, okay, let me show you. Let's do this one, okay? I'm going to crop this. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, uh, let me... Let's go back. Um, Is that a video? No. And we're going to do one more on this one. Actually, that was not... Oh, I want to get... Jane is cut off here, so I'm going to go in and crop that because that's a distraction. I want to leave the original and come in here and get Jane out of the picture. And you can just crop. There we go. And now we don't have that. We've removed the distraction, which you can use cropping for. Now, next week, I'm going to show you a better way of doing that, of getting rid of distractions where you don't lose. Because I'm right here, I'm removing parts of the picture. I'm enlarging it. The more I do that, the worse the quality becomes. Because now I'm starting to show a little bit of grain in here. All of this editing in photos, in Lightroom, in Photoshop, and Photoshop, there's a proviso in there, can be in Lightroom and in photos, it is non-destructive. So if I realize, oh, geez, I screwed up, all I have to do is come back here, go in and reset. Yeah, there it is. Revert to original. Bam, there it is. That way, you don't have to worry about messing something up. It's always fixable. But yes, it is non-destructive, which is a huge boon. Let's go back. Okay, albums. Okay, I knew there was boring here. Albums in the user interface, albums are like folders. That's where you can store collections of photos. You also have smart folders. You can have shared albums. Use albums so you can organize your photos and find them faster. And you can have photos of multiple albums. Like all the photos you saw me use here today, I create an album called MVCUG Editing, copies of those from other albums. There's where you find the editor. This little button here, see in a picture, let's go in, little icon brings up the information panel. This is where a lot of the metadata is stored as the, you go in and give a title of the image, what its file name was or is, when it was shot, what it was shot with, the ISO setting, length of the lens, your EV exposure, your f-stop, all the things that we talked about last week. You can go in and add a caption. You can go in and add keywords. You can go in and add faces in there of the people who are in there. Plus, it's geotag, where it was taken. Because believe me, that is one big thing I love about the iPhone camera, is it tells me where I took the picture. It always geotag. Must. I don't think you can stop geotagging. It's always there. But you can turn it off the camera set. I'm sure you can. Yeah, you, you probably can. Yeah, I've just never thought about that. But you have to go out of your way to turn it off. Caption is, you can have it titled something, and you can put a caption. Like, done Jane at Disney World. Daisy... Daisy Duck gives Jane a hug. Be the caption. Oh, she and da Daisy are really good friends. Okay, here's where you get the edit. No, I forgot to point this out. I, I should have called my own presentation. Oh, you'll find this on both the iPhone and the Mac editor. You'll see a magic wand. The magic wand goes through and tries to fix everything for you first, except cropping. Always start there. 80% of the time, it'll be perfect. It'll fix what's wrong. Okay, step one is the crop. Yeah, magic wand is up here. I'll show it to you again. Okay, here's the steps to good editing. Now we're going to go into light. What's my next slide? This is where we're going to be spending most of our time, and we're going to be looking at light, brilliance, exposure, highlights, shadows, brightness, contrast, black point. Those are terms which are very difficult to explain. So I'm going to show you. We're going to go into our photo editor, which is very here someplace. And down here at the bottom, I've got my grayscale. This goes from pure black to pure white with neutral gray in the middle. And what we're going to do, we're going to go into the editor and see what each one of these does. And then we'll go into actual photos. In light, I am affecting, if I make it brighter, I'm affecting all the tones. The light goes through and adjusts all the tonality and affects what is necessary. It's almost like an auto. Can't see too well here because it's a grayscale. Brilliance. Watch what happens with brilliance. As I increase the brilliance, I'm primarily affecting the upper ends of the grayscale. If I decrease brilliance, I'm primarily affecting the lower ends of the grayscale. 
exposure affects it all over the same. Highlights affects only the upper end, the whites. If I decrease highlights, it still only affects the white end. Shadows, this increases the light in the shadow areas, primarily 10, 20, and 30, or I can decrease the shadows. Now, this one, shadows, is the one you use most often, especially here in Arizona. Because what you can do is, if you're in a very high contrast scene and you don't, and you it give you more exposure, it's just going to make it look bad in the highlights. And use shadows to open up the shadow area where you can get detail. Because in digital photography, you have much more latitude in the dark area than in the light area, more detail. So by opening up or making the shadow areas lighter, you get more detail. Brightness affects overall, up and down. Brightness is brilliance on steroids. Brilliance is fine adjustment. Brightness is huge adjustment. Contrast increases the difference. Now watch what happens. The blacks and whites start disappearing. So I'm reducing the number of tones of gray. The other one, I'm increasing the tones of gray or making the picture flatter. The black point is where I adjust where the black point. You see it going up, changing the black point? Blacks get black. Blacks get blacker. The shades of gray become darker without affecting the white. From zero, effectively, farther in what's gray, fence those pixels. Why? We adjust the rest of it. Gordon. Now that we've seen what it'll do, let's go in and take a look at actual photos. Let's go. In, let's start off with this one right here. We take a look at this, and this one has got some real gliding problems. It's flat. Foreground being overtaken by the background. So let's start off with the magic brush and see if that can fix any of it. Well, it's... Oh, yeah, there it is. Wow, that did a lot. We still have a problem with the highlight areas being too bright and the shadow areas being too dark. So let's go into edit. First thing I want to do is take down the highlights. Let's really bring down the highlights. And then let's go in the shadow area and bring up the shadows. We've done that, but our black point disappeared. So let's increase our black point to get some true blacks back in. Increase the brightness a bit. There we go. That looks a lot better. Okay, so we fixed that one. It's better than it was. And I need to come into the crop. If I want to get rid of the that all that or what should I do glass? Effort. No, I mean where am I going? You can't. I've done it before with blur, like where there there's a blur of something I can make blurry. Or you can you can make it blurry. Okay, that comes under the the retouch tool. Retouch tool. Yeah, but getting rid of reflection in glasses, photos does not have that capability. Yeah, no, I've done it with retouch, though. That, that's the thing. Yeah. You just can blur it up so that it's not so... I mean, her glasses are popping off and getting my attention, that's all. Well, what we could do... We'll get to that later, okay? Okay, so let's go on and take a look at another one. Um, This one right here... Let's see if we can't open the shadows up just a bit. First, let's try the magic wand. That's because it's a video. What I'm going to do is come down here, duplicate one photo. Duplicate is a still photo. Come back out. And now I've got my still image. That's the still and not the... Yep. 
because there's no control bar. So let's try the magic wand. That helped a lot. You see the different where the shadows opened up? Let's go down here and open up the shadows. So it's not quite as contrasty. There, and increase the black point to get the blacks back. That looks a little bit. It's been there quite a while. So that one's done. Let's see what we can do with this one. Well, let's try the magic wand first. See what it does. There we go. That helped a bit. And I'm going to increase the highlights some to get that moon. There we go. That was a nighttime shot. Actually, shot at 5 o'clock in the morning. Handheld, 20 seconds, which is not too shabby. That The new cameras, the iPhone cameras, among other things, you can hand hold. And what it is doing in this, yeah, they, some of them did. It goes through on a long exposure, and it's shooting hundreds of pictures and then when you're done with the exposure it goes through analyzes them and puts together the best of those and aligns it perfectly so you have a perfectly in focus picture which is amazing it's just I, i've done it side by side tripod handheld and you can't tell the difference it's really great so that's how you fix exposure that's the important part now any questions on that let's go back and take a look at what's next after we fix the light we come to color now here's the Interesting thing that happens, when you fix the exposure correctly, a very large percentage of the time, you fix the color. You don't have to make any adjustments. When you increase contrast, you increase the saturation and the vibrance. If you're lucky, this step is not necessary, except when you want to change the color. Not fix it, but change it. So let's go in, and I'm going to stick with this, start with this one right here. This is still up. Let's go to the editor. We're now down here in light. Now you have the color, it grows color, and you have an auto key up here. And if you click on that, it's going to go through and try and adjust the color. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to revert back. That was the original. That's with the magic wand. Not much change. Just a little bit. The three things that it can change are saturation. Now let's talk about saturation and vibrance, because those are the two hardest ones to understand. Saturation affects all the colors evenly. So if something has reached the maximum saturation or maximum color level, it'll try to go beyond it. It'll, it'll become unnatural. Take a look at, we increase saturation. You see the blues, how they're changing? Yes. If I desaturate, that's black and white. Let it come up to about here. Now, vibrance only affects those colors which have not become saturated. Vibrance gives a much, a much better color. You only use saturation if the picture is desaturated, where the colors, all the colors, are very bland. But now we're getting. So temper the effect on skin tone or the, like if it detects a face, you got people in it, it's not going to oversat. Right. If if you have people in the photograph, do not use saturation. So there, I thought there was a thing to check off, not yet the skin tone. Yeah. I thought that there was a checkbox oh. for, um, for the check box for, for skin. Do you do it? Yeah. For white balance. But we're not talking about white balance yet. Okay. So, let's go down here. I want to close some of these down. Cast is changing the color. Watch what happens when I move the cast. That's red. Green. Cast, also known as tint, is red-green. Well, what if I want to affect the blue-yellow? That is called white balance. Under white balance, I can do... Neutral gray 
and that means that I want the colors balanced to neutral gray. And, I, and I'll select something in the photo that's neutral gray. To do that, I grab my eyedropper tool, and I'm going to say that this right here, neutral gray can be anything from black to white. You don't want any color cast in. I'm going to say, I want that building there to be white. Well, it shifted everything to the blue to make this white. I could come over here and say, no, I want that area to be neutral gray. It's sand. I could say, I want the sky here to be neutral gray. Or actually, better yet, is the clouds to be neutral gray. And it'll shift the color balance. If I have pictures of people, I would use skin tone. But only... I won't say only, but it is primarily designed, and we'll get to skin tones in a bit. The other one is where you go in and adjust it yourself. And you give the temperature. I want it to be set up for 5200 degrees Kelvin. Just daylight. I can shift it. Now I have a daylight scene. Now I've got it. Sunset. Or I can come back to neutral gray, grab this, grab the sand. So I can adjust the color any way I want. The vibrance and the warmth, the white balance. Those all affect color. And you can change the complete mood of a photograph doing it that way. So let's go over. Let's grab some people. Okay. This one looks a little washed out, which is why I picked it. Let's start off by the magic brush. It helped. There we go. That helped a bit. But. I want to go in and I'm going to increase the vibrance. See if I can not get. And then because they're in shadows. And it's, and the, the cropping on this is bothering me. I thought I fixed it. There we go. Let's see if we can increase the contrast just a bit. We got rid of that blue hue on the face. And we've taken it from a picture to not too bad. The colors are good. The lighting is good. We don't expect anything like this to be a professional picture, but they're recognizable. Let's go down and see if we have to fix anything else. Well, let's see. The color on this one is good. We don't have to fix the color on anything. Let's go up to our scenic. Let's see if we can't make this a little bit more vibrant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to saturation and increase the saturation. And increase the contrast. Yeah. Now the mountains are starting to pop. So I'm going to say that's okay on that. And that's how you fix color. Yeah. Okay, let's go through the steps on this one. First thing I want to do is I want to go through and let's apply the let's crop this thing first. The cropping is is it weren't in the net all let's see. There we go. And then There we go. Okay. Now let's go in and try the magic wand tool. Good start. Excellent start. But we need to open it up some. There we go. Okay. 
open up the shadows a bit more, bring down the highlights a bit more. Uh, challenge? We've taken gone from, I wish I'd have made a duplicate of this first. As you saw when I put it up, it was a throwaway photo. But in less than a minute, we now have a really nice picture. Any questions? Now, in order to improve this even more, we've got this guy back here we'd have to get rid of. We have this stuff here that's a distraction. That's a distraction. Because what's the picture of? Pictures of the couple. All the rest of this is distractions. Now, there's a couple ways we could do this. Yes. Copy subject. We could do that. Copy the subject. We can go into preview. Do from clipboard. And there we go. We've removed all the distractions. Now, did it do a perfect job? No. That is the problem with photos. Photos is not a professional editor. It is not designed for doing compositing. Edit it before you move to preview. The next topic we're going to talk about are special effects. Now, by special effects, I mean going in and changing things to make them different. The most common of which is distractions. Getting rid of things that are distracting from your subject. I'll tell you right now that Photos is very limited in this. Lightroom is better. Pixelmator, which is a free photo editor, kind of on scale with Photoshop, is even better. Photoshop is amazing. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I'm going to make a duplicate of one photograph. I'm going to go through in Photos and show you what we can do. Then I'm going to take us into Photoshop and do the same things. Let's go in Photos and we finish with this one. I'm going to work on this picture right here because it's got the most distractors in it. And those distractors are those phone lines. So I'm going to duplicate the photo. And I'm going to come down to Retouch Tool. Now, the Red Eye Tool, you remember the problem with people with flash photography where they get red eyes? This is an attempt to fix that. About 50% successful. Nope. One in, in, in photos. Now, if I didn't find it all that great. So I'm going to come in here to the red eye, to the retouch tool. There's the brush. Yes. Point something out. This feature is all. Well, that's right. On your iPad or iPhone in the Photos app, not yet, not yet. Yeah, I don't. I haven't heard they've added it. No, I want to get rid of these phone lines, and to do that, I want to make the size up here. Retouch tool, retouch tool as small as possible, just to cover it. There we go. There we go. I gave it a target. Hold down the option key. That's what I forgot to do. And it goes through and it looks for an area that is similar. To what I'm trying to fix. Yeah, well, I, I select an area. See the crosshairs? I select that area. Then I come across and it uses that area to fill in is what gives you the crosshair so that samples wherever you play. Oh, okay. Yeah, this this will take you hours on the only Okay. Okay. So you can use this for making small edits. For side it works best for like more like for just blemishes that are just... And what we're going to do is go over here, um, since we have lots of daisies. Yeah, all that, all those little things on the ground. But all this junk down at the bottom, like all this stuff down here, I can use the retouch tool on that.
What I want to do now is come in here, edit with this. I'm going to quit out of here. Again, the photos. Select this photo. Edit with the new beta from Photoshop. This is just going to give you a tease for next month. The remove tool. Yeah, that's the big difference. And this is the beta? What? Beta what? I do okay. Photoshop beta. Photoshop. To move them out. No. <laughs> that is what's coming. Now, understand, I did not spend a lot of time on this. If this were an actual project, I would have spent a little bit more effort, got it much cleaner, got the snow just right. But you just saw what I could do in less than 60 seconds that I couldn't do in the other two program. And this is the tip of the iceberg. I want an iceberg. There's my iceberg. <laughs> There's a tip of my iceberg, including the phone lines that were there. That's special effects. There's a lot more special effects, all kinds of stuff that you can do. But that's the very last thing you do. After you corrected everything else, then you go and ask the question, is there any way I can make this better? Do I need to get rid of stuff? I know I didn't. I forgot about it. Real quick, I'll show you filters. I totally forgot it. I never used them. The, the uh, grayscale on Katie. I used the filters um, a couple times to make uh, an image. Okay. The filters, you have a little, you have vivid, which makes it a lot more saturated. Vivid warm is more saturated. Yellow. Vivid cool. More saturated blue. Dramatic, higher contrast. Dramatic warm, three guesses. Dramatic cool, three guesses. Mono is a black and white. This one is called silver tone, which is a black and white, but um, different. Noir is high contrast black and white. That's why I never use them. Okay, we have any questions, folks? I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Gives you an idea of what you can do, the order that you do it in. The better you get the original, the less you have to mess with this. And that's the important thing. Try and get it right first. The biggest thing I always have to do is crop because I can't get close enough. I can't, but I will show you next week. You know, getting closer is easy. How about if you have to get further back? If you want to get more in the picture, how are we going to do that? I will show you next week how to do that. So less is more and more is less. Yes. Okay, folks. Thank you all very much and see you next month.